Does the game look like it stopped working or frozen when you switch between levels? Well, this happened with me all the time, but I have a last saving technique to cover up my mess, which is showing something to the user while your CPU work as hell. In other words, a loading screen. So today we are going to see how you can create a loading screen so that you can cover up your mess too. Now before jumping in Godot, let's understand how it's going to work. So as you know, we have a root of the tree, and then you have your main scene that will be the entry point of your game. Now beside it, we have one script that will be in auto load. So this will also come under the root. Now other than this, we have one loading screen which you want to display when the background loading will occur and the second scene that you want to load. Now when your game start, first your main scene is loaded. Let's say it is a main menu and player clicks on play button. Then it will send a signal to the auto load script and then the auto load script will first add the loading scene to the root. After that, it will delete the current scene from the root and while the loading screen is showing to the screen, it will load the next scene in parallel so that the game doesn't look like it freezes. It can also give the amount of data which has been loaded, which you can show using the progress bar in the loading screen. Now when all the data has been loaded, we will add the scene to the root and at last remove the loading screen. Now all this seems way too easy because first it actually is and the second, the real thing hasn't started yet. So get ready. Now for actual loading, we take the help of three functions. First, we have load interactive function of resource loader class. This function take a path of the scene and just return the basic detail of the scene, which we will then use to actually load the data. Secondly, we have poll function. This is where actually data loading start. This function take your data and break it into small pieces and load it one by one. This function written OK on successfully loaded piece and written this value when it has loaded all the pieces and there's nothing more. And if there's some problem, it will return an error. Now third, we have get stage function and get stage count function. Now get stage count will give you the total number of pieces and get stage function will give you how many pieces have been loaded. Now you have all the necessary detail. So let's get into Godot. Here's I've created a loading scene which have a background an animation player that I use to move this Godot icon and a progress bar that will show the progress of loading. Now let's create a loading script. First we extend the node otherwise some basic function like get tree or queue free will not work. Then we create a new function that will take the current scene and the next scene that we want to load. Now as I told before the first thing that we need to do is add a loading scene to the root. So outside the function we will preload the loading scene and then inside this function we will create an instance of it and then add this instance as the child of the root node. Once the loading scene is added, we use the load interactive function to get the metadata of the scene. Now if there's some problem while firing the data, it will return null. So we do a check if we get null, then we will show the error message and exit the function. Now if everything works fine, we first delete the current scene from the root and wait for 0.5 seconds so that our loading scene can appear. Now since the poll function load the data in pieces, that's why we need to put that in a loop. So for that, we create an infinite loop and call the poll function and store the returned value in the variable. Now if this function written OK, this means a piece of data has been loaded correctly. So now we can update the progress bar here. We first get the progress bar node in the loading scene, then we use get stage function and get stage count function to get the percentage loaded. The get stage function will give how many pieces have been loaded till now, and get stage count function will give the total number of pieces available. Also, we are converting the numerator to float so that the resultant will be a decimal value. Now, if the function returns this end of file, that means we have successfully loaded all the data. So now we can take the scene that we loaded and create an instance of it. And after creating it, we will add the scene as a child of the root. And then we remove the loading scene from the root and get out of the loop. Now if you get something other than OK or end of file, this means there is some error while loading the piece. So here you can write the code to handle the error and end the loop. And that's it. Now you got the code of the loading scene completed. And now I want you to try to figure out how to use this script. I mean, I told you the entire working in the beginning of this video and you have a script which literally contain a single function. So give it a try and come back later if you messed up something. So I am assuming you tried and things didn't go well. So let's see. As I said earlier, we are going to auto load the script so that we can access this function from everywhere in the game. And you may already know how to add a script to the auto load. First we go to project, then project setting and then switch to auto load tab. Here you just need to select the script and then set the name by which you want to access it. And finally click on add. Now let me just quickly show you how to use it. So in this example, I have scene 1 and scene 2. So scene 1 contain a button and I want to switch to scene 2 when I press it. So on the button press signal, I will write global to access my auto load script and call the load scene function and pass self which represent the current scene and then the path of the scene 2 which I want to load. Now I can just run the game and when I press the button, the loading scene appear and then we have the scene 2. 
Now since the loading is so fast, you can't see the progress in the progress bar. So just to show you the progress, I'm stopping the loop function for a short amount of time. And now you can see the progress in the progress bar. So that's it for this video. I hope you find something new in this one. As always, if you have any doubt, write down in the comment section and I will try to solve it. If you really like this video, then do leave a like and share it with your friends. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.